All right, for the first time ever, Disney Pixar is taking us to a world that we have never been to before, the land of the dead. This isn't a dream then. You're all really out there. You thought we weren't? Well, I don't know. I thought it might have been one of those made-up things that adults tell kids, like vitamins. Miguel, <laughs> like vitamins. Over 100 animators worked to bring the new movie Coco to life and seamlessly created the transition from the land of the living to the land of the dead. One of those animators is Burlington, Ontario native Brendan Beasley, and he's joining us in studio this morning. Good to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. These are the kinds of interviews that I do that my kids actually pay attention to. So I um, can't wait to talk to you. First of all, your role in Coco. What part did you animate? So, yeah, I was an animator on Coco, and I was responsible mostly for animating Miguel. I got to do... Who is the lead that we were just watching? Who is the lead character in the film. I got to do mostly scenes in the living world, but also in the dead world. And what was great about it is that there are so many contrasts. So I got to do things where he's on stage, he's performing, he's doing musical performances, he's dancing. Uh, and then I also got some quieter moments where we just really see the emotion in him and his thought process happening. It's interesting to hear you talk about scenes. It's almost like how an actor picks a script. Is there a range of emotion for me to be able to display? How deep can I go as a character? And as an animator, is it very similar? Exactly, yeah. We approach all of the performances by, with these characters the same way that a, an actor would approach their scenes. You know, we do research, we want to know the backstory of a character, we want to know what happened to them before our scenes and what's going to happen to them afterwards. We need to have context. And we also do a lot of acting reference as well. So before we start animating on the computer, we have an acting room that we can go into. And really? we listen to the audio that was done by the voice actors. And we record ourselves kind of acting out any kind of gestures or physicalities. You know, we want to capture just small nuances, mannerisms that we don't necessarily know we're doing. And that's those are the cool. be that's the beautiful part about, you know, a lot of these characters is just kind of putting some of this flavor in that we, we capture on the reference footage. I had no idea. Hey, listen, I want to talk to you about your journey before we go back to Coco for a second. You started out, so you're, right now you're animating the lead of this big Disney Pixar film, but yes. you started out at Max the Mutt Animation School in Toronto? Yes. What yes. is that? <laughs> Max the Mutt is an animation school. It focuses, when I was there, it focused mostly on traditional animation, right? So... Uh, like The Lion King, The Jungle Book, 101 Dalmatians, that style of, of animation. And that was a three-year program, and I learned the fundamentals of animation, which was crucial. Yeah. And then I got to move to Seneca and focus on the digital part of it. Right. And that was, I met some people there that helped lead me into a career at Pixar. This is obviously a dream come true for you. You've wanted to do this since you were young. Tell us about that story. Yeah, this has definitely been a dream. I've been animating. I started animating before I even knew I was animating. You know, I used to make birthday cards for people, and they were flipbook style, draw little progressional photos on every page. Um, and then just kind of, it just evolved from there, and I started taking courses outside of high school on the weekends. And was it hand-drawn animation that you used to watch before digital? Hand-drawn animation, exactly. Amazing. Um, what's it like to work with a big firm like Disney Pixar on something that you know is going to have a huge marketing push behind it? You know, it's, there's a big appeal for all ages in the audience. Um, it's an amazing experience. You know, Pixar puts so much into these films, so much research goes into this, and it's amazing to see what they're capable of doing. And you've got musicality in this one, too. There's some singing. How does that change the process? Uh, yeah, so this is, this is actually one of my scenes right here. This is a... This was one of the fun ones. This is in a sequence called Talent Show. And what was fun about this sequence is that for the research, we had a musician who recorded all the, the guitar chords and finger picking. So when I was animating this, I was able to look at the reference footage of that. So we wanted to make it as authentic as possible. So every all the music that you see in here, all the chords is the exact chords for this music. So if you were trying to pick it apart, you would be, he's, doing, he's doing the right chording right there. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see. There's a lot of motion blur on there, but you could, you could pick it apart. Well, I will watch for that now when we see the movie. You've also Great. worked on The Good Dinosaur, Inside Out, you know, really popular films. What's it like to work on these big budget productions? Oh, I mean, it's a dream. The, the thing that I love about Pixar and these big budget productions is that it's, they put a lot of value in making a great movie in the story. And you know, the detail that they allow us to put into these scenes 
uh, is, is amazing. And I really value that. What's your advice for any kids out there who are right now doing what you were doing, starting out by making their own comics, sketching their own flip books? Yeah, just keep doing it. Keep drawing, keep doing research, and you know, any, anything that you see that you love, try to emulate it. Um, that's what I was doing. I was always copying things that I loved. I was pausing animation films, and I would just draw you know, one frame. I would just draw the characters from that, and then I would play a little bit more and pause another frame, draw that, and just, just draw and, and study as much of it as you can. Brandon, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. And just a reminder for everybody, Coco will be in theaters November 22nd.